Well, two topics today, Mr. Sams. Graham crackers. Oh, the big Billy Graham. Yeah. yeah Graham Graham's. crackers and Dalton's Laws. Yeah. Actually, it's not Billy Graham, though. No. It's some other guy named Graham. Yeah. I forget his first name. What I is don't it? know. Yeah, so no Graham's. idea. Can't, oh, well. And Dalton. Dalton. John Dalton. I That's know that. the Dalton of the atomic theory. Yeah, so same that. dude. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we're going to talk about those things today. And so I think we'll start with a quick video clip um, about Graham's Law. Okay. All right. Do you smell that? Ooh, oh, yes. Gosh, what? it's like diffusing out of the biology room. Dead things. There's probably dead things. We should figure out what's in there. Let's go see what it is. Oh, gosh. Ms. Papadakis, do you have dead things? Yes, dead cats. Dead cats? Dead cats? Are you dissecting them for anatomy? Yes. That's disgusting. Well, you can smell the dead stuff, the fur. What do they preserve them in these days? Is it still formaldehyde? Formalin, or? I think. Formalin, yeah. You can smell it. You can smell it clear in the hallway. So it's like... Go, it's diffusing from the cat through the air in the little hallway here, all the way out the door into the hallway. So all of us who walk down the hallway and who eat our lunch near this hallway, we get to enjoy the diffused formalin smell from the dead cats. So let's go talk about why that happens. Okay. Mr. Sam, that, that, that was smelly. Um, yeah. My word. Those biology people, they like make smelly things. Yeah, yeah, if it smells, it's probably biology. Biology. Yeah, okay, well, so let's talk about uh, Dalton's Law. Here is uh, Mr., actually not Dalton's Law, Graham's, Graham's Law right here, and this is Mr. Graham, and this is what he said. All right, I forget what Mr. Graham's name is. It's called diffusion. Mr. Right. Sams, what is diffusion? Well, diffusion is when you have a gas, <laughs> a um, gas coming okay. from one source, and it passes through a medium, and usually that medium is just the air in a room. Okay. And as it does that, well, um, it bumps into these other gas molecules that are in the room, so it takes it a while to get there. Because, okay. um, the, you know, these molecules... So if it starts at a point, so we have a source... Yeah. Say a, a dead a cat. A dead cat. Yeah, right. okay. And so then there's gas particles, and they start flying around, mm -hmm. and then some of them... So these gas particles, they're moving around, and eventually, well, they go out in the hallway. Yeah. Actually, because they're moving randomly, sometimes they'll back up, but eventually they spread throughout. Let's say this is the room that you're standing in. This is the dead cat right here, DC. Huh, the dead, dead cat. Dead cat. Yeah, and those particles eventually spread out through the whole room, and then they stink up the room. Right. Now, remember these molecules are moving at, you know, like, thousands of miles an hour. They're going it really, really be fast. Should like immediate, though? Yeah, so it should be... Pretty much instantaneously, but the fact that they're bumping into the other gas molecules in the room keeps them from getting there instantly. Yeah. I'm not sure we've really said this or proven this, but just as a side note, folks, folks, I can't talk today, that the molecules move at about 1,000 miles an hour. We said that, I think, in, um, in a previous podcast, but there's actually calculations, and we won't yeah. do that, that prove that the average, uh, say, oxygen molecule in the room that we're standing in is moving at about 1,000 miles an hour, which is really kind of amazing, really. All right. So... Um, so diffusion here is the tendency of molecules to move towards areas of low concentrations. Yep. I think we've already said that. Yeah, high everything to low. goes from high to low. High to low. All right. All right. Well, let's move on here. So here is a, a picture of diffusion. Right. This is uh, liquid diffusing through another liquid here. But um, looks like a drop or two of uh, food coloring was dropped in a cup of water. Yeah. And it's slowly diffusing from an area of high concentration to low concentration until it's uniformly distributed. Now, one thing else we should say, Mr. Sams, here is in the, the beaker on the left, or the cup on the left, is filled with hot water. Oh, yeah. Look, and the beaker on the, uh, is, this is filled with cold water. Yeah, it looks Can like you it's, talk about that, it, well, it's diffusing faster in the cup on the right because the water is hot. The water is hot, meaning the molecules are moving faster. Right. And so it can diffuse faster. Yeah. So if we had been uh, in that biology room where it was really, really hot, it would have diffused faster and the stink would have happened more rapidly mm -hmm. into the hallway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's pretty cool. All right. So we're going to continue with Mr. Graham's laws. Yep. Okay. And what is the official Graham's law? Well, the Graham's law of now, the effusion, fusion, right? E, now, now, effusion is a little different. It's than a little different than diffusion. Now, when we, when we get to the calculations, we calculate them the same way. But effusion is the passing of a gas through a tiny hole. See, now look at the picture, guys. We mm -hmm. have a tiny pinhole here, kind yep. of pinkish here. And if we look at this tiny pink hole, we've got the gas over here, which is the little green dots. Mm -hmm. And they're going to start traveling through the hole. As you right. can see, a few, four or five of them, uh, green dots have passed through. Yep. But so over time... It, they'll, it, over time, they'll be the same. And again, it's going from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. It'll do so until they're the same. 
So right, we have so a gas that passes through a tiny hole. So a process by which a gas goes through a tiny hole. That mm -hmm. is what effusion is, as opposed to diffusion, which just spreads out through the whole room or the whole container of whatever. Right. Okay. And here's that picture. In it's zoomed. big. It's big. Okay. And so continuing on with Graham's law. Okay. So here's kind of a because it can also like apply to like perfume. Yeah. You know, uh, perfume stuff it drives me crazy. I don't like it. It gives me a headache, and I sneeze a lot when yeah. I smell it. Yeah, yeah. So never fail. It's five minutes before lunch, and I have a student. Pulls out the smelly stuff, pss, puts a little bit on. Ooh. Could be a guy, could Nasty. be a girl, you never know. And then, you know, like 30 seconds before the bell rings, I start to smell it. Now, it doesn't, I don't smell it instantly because, again, it's bumping through confusion, all the air molecules. Confusion, yeah. It gets to me eventually, and oh, I just for the rest of lunch, I now have a headache. So we have this romance in yeah. Swampland, my yeah. darling, little perfume it's, it's Mosquito repellent. Mosquito repellent, yeah. yeah. By the way, I don't know if you realize, but the background image for this particular podcast is a bottle of perfume. perfume. Yeah. Now, Graham's law is not just conceptual. No, we can do some it's math. It's also mathematical. Yay, math! So, how fast does it actually effuse or defuse? Mm -hmm. Well, all right. We've learned something recently. Yeah. At the same temperature and pressure, they have the same amount of energy. So, all gas particles, regardless of what they are, have the same amount of energy. Therefore, therefore, where's my pot? Okay. This is still Graham's law. Sorry, I've got some stuff on this fixing here. Okay. Heavy gases go what? Slower. So, if I have two gases... They have the same energy, mm -hmm. so that if you have a big heavy guy, he's going to go slow. That makes the light gases go fast. Fast. Elephant and the bumblebee. The elephant, but um, but um, but um, big yep. mass, nice yeah, and yeah, slow. Yeah, bumblebee, yeah. tiny mass, <laughs> all over the place. So, which would you like to hit by, the elephant or the bumblebee? It depends on which end. <laughs> I would prefer to be hit by the front end of a bumblebee, but probably, well, not maybe not the back end of an elephant either. But yeah, yeah, it's kind of a weird thing. Actually, the point of this is since they have the same energy, they would actually have the, if you know the bumblebee's going that much faster. Yeah, it would hurt you just as much as the slow moving elephant. Right. Although yeah. that would have to be a really fast bumblebee to have the actual same amount of energy. I would think so. Here's a yeah. Here's some speech. Actually, speaking yeah. of speech, hey, 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 talking about it. This is in meters per second. That's a lot of meters per second. Yeah. Hydrogen will go at 1,960 meters wow, per second. Wow, because it's tiny. It's light. It has a it's molar mass light. of two. Yeah, molar mass of two, as you can see down here. Helium is going to go 1,360 meters per second. Oxygen 490 meters per second. This is equivalent to about, like I said, uh, uh, 1,200 miles an hour or something like that. Something like that. And these guys, of course, are going much faster than that. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. All right. All right. So let's do All some right. math. So let's do some math. Okay. So this equation, still Graham's law, can be written. All right. Let's write the equation. Here it is, the fancy equation. The rate of A over the rate of B is equal to the square root of M M molar mass molar mass of B over A. Now, a thing that students sometimes mix up is the A and the B are opposite each other. Yes. So, so A is on the numerator on the left, denominator on the right. Exactly. And it doesn't matter what A or B Inversely proportional. Inversely proportional. So let's do some math on this. Okay. We've got it twice. Okay. So here's a question. At 25 degrees Celsius, helium diffuses at 1,360 meters per second. How fast does propane diffuse? Okay. Let's okay. use our equation. Well, let's use our equation. So let's call gas one. Actually, let me just say something yeah. here. Gas A is best that gas A be the, the heaviest one. heavier one. Yeah, the one with the bigger so molar mass. We've got helium here. That has okay. a molar mass of four. Four grams per mole, um, because that's what it's in there. Mm -hmm. Propane C3H8. 36 be, plus eight. 44. Uh, 44 grams per mole. Now, where'd you get that, Mr. Sanders? I just added three carbons plus eight hydrogens. All right, so let's say A is the propane. I'll just say P. And B is the helium. Okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to say the rate of gas A, okay, this is helium, okay, so helium goes faster, so he's actually B. So say 1360 over X, that's what you're trying to find. This is the rate of gas um, uh, B is equal to the square root of, now it's going to be B, now that square root of 44 divided by the square root of 4, okay? Right. Again, so, just put the heavier one over the lighter one, Right. the molar mass. So, I don't think we need to get the calculator out, but... So I've got my calculator out here, Sam. So okay. let's do the, um, let's do, well, we can say 1360 over X. I'm going to simplify this term here. Yeah. And so I'm going to take the square root. Now the square root button is right here by the X squared. Second function, square root of 44, divided by a little, uh, 4, right? Yep. And I close the parentheses. Close parentheses. And I'm going to get uh, 3.32. So that's 3.32 over 1. Now I need to cross multiply, right? Mm -hmm. So I can say 1360 times 1, which of course is 1360, is equal to 3.32x. 
Now, of course, I divide both sides by 3.32, right? Yep. And the 3.32s cancel, so I'll take my 1360 divided by 3.32, and I get 400, wow, that's a lot. 410. 410, yes, yeah, so let's call it 410. Now, what does that number mean? That's the meters per second. That's, the, that's how fast that uh, the propane molecules are moving. Right, so that's the rate, the speed at which they yeah. travel.